How's it going guys? Welcome back to Dip Discovery. So today I'm looking at the Senna SRL2 uh, intercom system um, which you can fit on the Shoei GT Air 2 and the Neotech 2. So let's open this thing up and let's have a look what we got. So this is the front of the box here, if you're checking it out in store, it tells you which helmets it's actually uh, compatible with and on the back it also tells you some features there as well about uh, you know what you can expect to get from the SRL2. It's an integrated comms unit so it only works with select showy GT Air 2 or Neotech 2 helmets. So let's just uh, slide this thing out and let's see what we get. Okay, so there we go and you get the nice black box there as well and obviously it specifically just states that it's only for showy helmets then inside because it is just pretty much a one kind of integrated system they've got this molded enclosure here which um, shows you the whole kind of unit and how it all pieces together so you put that to the side there and you get a little uh, tray at the bottom and then let's see what we get inside there so We've got some cables and the instructional manual as well. So inside here is an instruction manual with some center stickers as well. It shows you how to set the thing up, but it's pretty straightforward to be honest. Um, you've also got a uh, optional uh, external mic uh, array as well, which you can use. Um, I'm guessing that will be for the Neotech 2 setup. The GTA 2 has actually integrated mic in the actual uh, chin bar here, which is what this thing is there as well. So that's what that's for. And then obviously you've got a little uh, micro USB cable, it's not a type C, just old school micro USB to charge the thing. And then we've got the little mic boom uh, you know, covers here um, to stop the pops when you're using it in the Neotech 2 mode as well. Uh, so let's have a look at what we have here. So you've got the speakers left, right, you've got the uh, on off buttons here on there. This is the battery pack which goes to the back of the helmet and then this is just a side panel which will also be your antenna as well. So yeah, really quick unboxing. I'm going to actually start fitting this now to my Shoei GT Air 2 so we can have a look at that process. Alright, so I've got the GT Air 2 here and I've put this little towel down so I don't scratch the helmet while I'm doing the install uh, on this table. So first thing you gotta do is take out the interior uh, cushions. So I'm just gonna do that. Really easy, they just kind of pop out with these buttons to keep them in place. Just gotta take that out. And there's also the, the skull cap, which you need to take out as well. So let me just do that. And it's really easy. Pull this out. Okay, now inside the actual helmet, um, you have got two ear pockets, uh, which have got covers on them. So they're actually just spaces if you're not installing the uh, head headset. So you need to remove those as well. I'll just give you a quick look at what that looks like. So here are the actual uh, spaces there that you need to remove, and they just kind of stuck on with a few clips. So let me just take that out. Might be a bit difficult if I'm doing it with one hand. Um, but uh, let's see, uh, it has actually, you can kind of see there, it's got these little uh, round uh, clips, so we've just got to take them out. There we go, and then you can see there's this big recess here with cable routing all the way through the helmet to the mic, you can see all this cable channel, and that's where the uh, Neo, uh, SRL2 will go. Now once you've taken all the foam padding out of the uh, case, uh, not case, sorry, helmet, um, you need to get this little uh, plastic trim removal tool. It comes in the box with your Shoei GTA 2 or Neotech 2 helmet. And you actually need to use this to take off these little side panels here, because these are just like spacers. So let me just see how this works. Then it, cut, it allows you to kind of pry them off without the thing breaking like that. So that's one. Uh, and that's, that's two. There we go, that's two. Um, and that leaves you to have the space to put the actual comm system. So now that I've taken that off, um, I'm going to get the headset wiring loom. It's going to really go in one way. 
Uh, oh yeah, the back as well. There's another bit there for the back. Basically, that's where the uh, battery pack goes. So let me just take that off. Once you take that off, there is a little bit of foam padding in there. So you can just remove that as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna put in is the back uh, battery pack, like that. Again, it can only go in one way. There we go, so once it's in, you shouldn't be able to pull it out easily. Um, you need to make sure that it's plugged in to the uh, gasket, um, you know, at the back. So, yeah, just need to get that in there properly. Uh, right, and then the cables pretty much just follow the uh, wire channels inside the actual helmet to uh, where they kind of go. So it's quite self-explanatory, really. So let's just do that. All right, so put the uh, speakers in there and then you have to route the wire through there like that and then you kind of get this little plastic tab which you push it in between the foam padding and then it anchors it down um, so yeah it's a, it's a bit of a weird way of doing it but you have to do that on both sides like that and then um, on this uh, where is it the right side speaker um, has got a little connection there which you connect your microphone to using this little microphone and then that follows this channel in there like that into this bit where you put a little velcro um, little sticker and then it'll stick there and stay in place. Okay, so what is a bit strange is inside the GTA 2 there's this bit of a kind of like a, a gasket which is actually not removable and the wiring channel actually has to go over it which is a bit of a design fail basically and the cable seems to be slightly too long as well because it is going over it and look it kind of bunches up there but once the cheap pads in it's not that big of a deal but I'm pretty sure you can't actually go underneath this thing like it feels like because it's stitched in there you can't rip it out um but yeah once the cheap pad in it'll keep it in place so it's not that big of a deal okay so it takes a bit of persuasion um it is a lot of fiddling around to be honest uh so it's knackering me out that um but yeah it's finally in and it looks as it did when it came out the box that oem look and uh the good thing about the gta 2 is uh when you actually put it on the, uh, there's no foam around your actual ear, so you just get direct speaker in there, um, which is good. Now, I'm just going to actually plug it into the micro USB, which is this little flap here, and give it some charge, and then it should be good to go. Okay, guys, so I'm out on the road with the Senna SRL2 uh, system, and to be honest, I'm quite disappointed. Um, at £220, it's a very expensive system to put inside your helmet. And if you wanted that integrated look, this is the only option you've got. The problem is, is I've come from a Senna 20S uh, headset, which is actually older than the Senna SRL2. Um, but the Senna 20S has got HD speakers standard in the, uh, in the system. Uh, but the Senna SRL2 doesn't have any HD speakers got some bog standard speakers and the problem is the SRL2 speaker system is just shit there's no nice way of putting it it's uh, it's a terrible system it's really really tinny there's like zero bass to it whatsoever um, and um, it just doesn't sound good at all it's uh, the sound stage is terrible um, you know, it's quite quiet as well, like you have to kind of crank it up, but you just can't hear hardly any bass coming from it. And you know, obviously you you, the road noise of the um, the bike kind of uh, drowns it out, you know, the audio quality of the SRL2. So I was very disappointed uh, considering the price, 220 pounds, it's not cheap. 
and I was expecting at least 20s levels of uh, audio quality. If it did have that, then I'd be happy, but it's not. Uh, it uses the old uh, Senna uh, app as well, the same one as the 20s, which will give you some features on there, but it's quite basic. Can't really do much on it. So uh, yeah, it's. I, I just was expecting more, to be honest. In terms of like the microphone quality, is actually really really good. That I've had conversations with. Uh, people on the phone um, you know that's one thing Senna do quite well it's quite what they're well known for their nose cancelling microphone technology which works really really well that's not a problem you can also use um, uh, OK Google with it as well or Apple um, assistant um, you know uh, Siri with it by pressing and holding the center button here for like um, what is it like? I think it's two seconds, and then you kind of get the, uh, the the little system pop up. So that's cool. Um, but uh, yeah, with the speakers, what's the main thing that kind of um, gives it a bad rep? To be honest, in my opinion, it's not worth it. Um, so what uh, I do know though um, that Senna have actually released last month a new version of the SRL system called the Senna SRL Mesh. Now I've got a review of that coming up uh, on the channel so I'd recommend checking that out and the main difference is that it fixes my pain points is it comes with Harman Kardon uh, engineered speaker system. Um, and Harman Kardon own JBL and JBL do the speakers for um, Cardo uh, so they should be uh, better than those um, you know uh, but uh, and obviously being a mesh system has got the new mesh quantum technology by Senna and it has the um, the app, uh, the updated Senna app as well, which is a bit more intuitive and it has a bit more speakers. So, so yeah, um, hope you like the uh, unboxing review uh, of the Senna Restaurant 2. Let me know what you think, guys. If you want to have a look at my motor blog setup, uh, we've got links in the description there below and all the uh, everything you need to if you want to buy any of the kit. And I'll catch you on the next one.